So the next question we've got, and we'll start with you, Dave, on this one. This is from William Taylor, and he wants to know, tips on downhill running technique and efficiency would be great to hear. Would love to hear things to practice and incorporate into training runs to avoid mashing the legs too early on race day. Another entire podcast coming up. <laughs> um, so I, I said when I was when I was thinking about this um, this afternoon, what I was going to say, I was thinking about me and you, John, doing the training for the Lakeland 100, working on our downhill running technique. Um, and it takes me about, what year was that? 2012? 2012, yeah. 1964. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a lad. So I wanted to, obviously, we all know that we have problems towards the tail end of an ultra with our quads. But I wanted to back that up. So I actually went a little bit of research this afternoon. So there's a study in 2019. And what this study found was it um, that the greatest slow down if you if you're comparing flat running uphill time and downhill time the greatest differential in slow down in ultramarathons is on the downhill towards the end of a race and i'm sure vast majority of people out there are training to get themselves along the flat and up the hill as fast as they can or as efficiently as they can and maybe ignore what's going to happen towards the end of the race when you're coming downhill and I remember I kept saying this to you John that if you're having to walk downhill at the end of the race you are wasting gravity that is the line you've got to use gravity it's it's like a cardinal sin having to walk downhill at the end towards the end of a race so the problem is that the the sort of physical load the forces when you're running downhill are so big on your on your muscles okay yes they're, they're big muscles and they can take them to a degree but it's absolutely brutal what your quads in particular are taking because of these eccentric contractions so your muscle is is kind of trying to contract and be and breaking but it's been pulled at the same time and that's why you suffer with this sign of muscle soreness after so the issue with this is, and people are probably thinking, right, if I go out and do loads and loads of downhill running, I'm going to get really good at this. No, not quite, because if you do loads of downhill running, you're going to be so beaten up all of the time that you're actually not going to be able to do quality training over a period of time. So you go out and you do a really hard downhill training session, then you can pretty much write off the training effect for the next four days. So you've got to be thinking long term all the time. So um, a few points to think about while you're actually doing some downhill. So these are almost like I'm te put, put PE teacher's hat on for a moment. So like the coaching points, just something to think about while you're trying to do this. So high cadence. So a lot of us, when we start running downhill, we tend to try and bound a little bit more. Um, and when you bound, what that does, you're overstriding slightly, you're hitting the ground with greater force and it's a greater breaking force. So it's even more brutal on your legs. So if you can kind of think pitter patter with a leg strike, or well, a foot strike, sorry, to the ground, you're gonna reduce your ground contact time. You're gonna keep a high cadence, high cadence. So therefore your, the forces on your body are a lot less. So basically you're trying to preserve that failure point and make it as far down the race as you possibly can. Um, if it's possible, obviously, the very, very steep stuff, this isn't necessarily possible, but you want to try and avoid landing with a heavy heel foot when you're running downhill. You want to try and land a little bit more forefoot. And the way to do that is another point, is to kind of just move your body weight, your centre of gravity forward a little bit. You're never going to quite run perpendicular to the hill, but if you can get forward a little bit, the more you lean back, the more braking force you've got and the higher general forces. So try and lean forward a bit. And what you're trying to do is get your feet to land so that there's a minimal fraction of a second before they're already moving backwards. You want your feet moving backwards as they hit the ground rather than hit the ground, break, move my body weight over them and then start the whole process again. So if you can think about your body position, try and lean forward a little bit. And here's a really good one. This is one that I think about a lot when I'm running downhill is try and run as quietly as you can. Um, and by doing that, you're automatically going pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, rather than thud, 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 thud. You're not trying to beat the hill into submission. You're trying to go down it as efficiently as you can. Um, and the final thing, and you can only do this or come on to my perhaps, but I know the question talked about what can I do in training? So that's the kind of second part, but um, something you can practice in training, but makes a big difference is start to look ahead a little bit more on the trail. So you, a lot of people, when particularly if they're less, less confident running downhill, just look at their feet, which then in, 
you can't pick a nice line through the terrain. So what you need to try and do is become more, more trustworthy of your brain that actually it will hold the information 10, 15 meters ahead of you. So you've then got a better body position as you're actually running. Um, I don't know whether at that point, any other kind of coaching points, Eddie, that you might add in on that? Well, that is very interesting. There's a study. I need to dig it out because I tell people about it all the time. But if you, have a, if, if you have a strong core, it releases something in your brain that allows your body to move faster downhill because your brain, your body is telling your brain, I am supported. You can go for it. Um, <clears throat> obviously, living in the mountains, I've had a ton of practice of this. And I moved here <laughs> five years ago. And I, I really, I was so shocked my first race when I turned up and went, whoop, whoop. Here I go. I'm going to show these Europeans how to run. And we ran uphill and then we went downhill. And I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Guys, where are you going? Oh my God, they run down. So, the most, I mean, if you can learn to ski, <laughs> It's a winner because it's exactly that. And like they, I talk to, um, I run with a lot of my mates out here and the downhill is always the bit when I'm turning around going, C guys, come on, what, what are you doing? We're pretty much, you know, we can jog uphill in the same place. The downhill, I'm like, come on. So the little tips I always do is get in that ready position. Think of a tennis player. Think of anybody about to do a sport. You prep your body. I'm ready. I'm ready. If, if I trip, I'm balanced. I'm ready to go. And another good tip, try this out training, is I like to sing. I think if you sing a good song as you go downhill, you relax, you stop thinking about what your feet are doing and what's going next and are you going to fall off that cliff. You pick a good tune and off you go and you sing as you go downhill. And I guarantee, I'd like some video evidence, guarantee you'll run better. It's all about relaxing and it's all about not thinking, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to fall. It's all about, I am in control. I'm too, like, like Dave said, I'm too, I think in skiing now, I'm two turns ahead and I know what's coming and I've got a strong core and I can embrace that downhill and just practice I mean it is literally there's no secret to it it is just practice 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 and That's running up the path if you've got a downhill don't stay on the path go off the path and practice in a little bit of technical stuff so that you're not so if you're thrown something in a race you got it but it is I mean it's such a skill and I'm, I'm still not as good as I'd like to be it's interesting because John knows my two songs <laughs> I have two songs that I sing in technical terrain on downhills and so on that make me smooth. One of them, I'm, one of them, I'm very happy to reveal, and the other one, I'm very sad to reveal. But <laughs> Oasis, roll with it. So I sing you that rolling roll down the hill, it. exactly. And the other one, eighties throwback, Sade, smooth operator. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what I sing when I run oh downhill. That's, that's it. I love it. Be smooth. So what, going with the confidence thing, Eddie, so one of my training tips was that initially, if you're very inexperienced, find a hill locally. It doesn't have to be a long hill. It can be a 20-second run downhill. That's all it needs. And obviously on a trail would be ideal. But run the same hill downhill lots and lots of times mm. so you know the hill. Mm because mm. that then takes a little bit that fear that unknown quantity away so you become more confident um, absolutely you're my lo your down. local hills you don't yeah. even think about them you run back yeah. down and then when you when you when you find something technical that you've not done before and you're like oh stand back that's such a good tip i yeah. love that just and just practice and I, 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 a lot of my athletes particularly when they're doing uh, training for races like that, that i've incurred a lot of climbing like late in 100 UTMB, that kind of thing so not to do with the downhill bit or it's only partly but we have our hiking reps and most people mm. do their running reps and blah 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 well okay well, hang on a minute but race specificity you're actually going to hike most of the hills 90 so we do high, hard hiking reps with a pack on and then turn around and run back down and obviously you're repeating the same hill again there so that's a great way of just building up the confidence of of uh, being able to do that nothing beats going out for a long run with lots of hills in it don't you know don't get me wrong but we not everybody's able to do that i realize that something else to consider maybe that i've got other things written down but i am conscious of the time um another thing to consider is that in most ultra races certainly in the uk and um on the continent in europe you're going to have to run with a pack on and running downhill without a pack compared to running downhill with a pack is almost a different sport. 
start off without the pack to get the confidence but then at some point you've got to take that step because you've got to know how your body balances with a pack because it's different to how it balances without a pack so just something to be aware of as you go forward and don't blast that first hill down no, whatever no. you do i mean control 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 run the last hill well, thank you to both of you for some great advice there. And I'm sure, um, William, hopefully that will answer some of your questions and everybody else that's listening. Okay.